And what I did in this case is I uh, I took an existing C++ demo project that we shipped with XE2 and XE3 uh, for 32-bit C++, and I augmented it. But what Fireflow is, is Fireflow is a classic user interface metaphor uh, used, for example, showing cover art. So if you search in, in Google search and in Wikipedia, you'll see cover flow. And cover flow is that thing that you see in iTunes and others where you put images of album covers. And as you're moving through the album covers, it flips them from one to another. So that was called cover the cover flow user interface model. And so uh, in, our, in our sample, which is called Fireflow, uh, it takes FireMonkey and it lets you load a group of pictures and then uses 3D animation inside of a viewport to do the cover flow. And cover flow is a layout 3D and then some pictures based on selecting pictures from a directory will be created, T-images will be created and parented to the, the layout 3D. And then as we uh, move the trackbar or as we use the arrows to move or the mouse to click between pictures in the cover flow, then uh, we uh, we get that user interface effect. So let's take a look at this, and then let's select pictures of where to find it. We have these pictures here, some nice flowers and other things. And so notice now it loads up into the into the cover flow, and it uses this uses code to do animations to take the next picture, which is angled at about a seventy degree angle that's underneath. When we click on it, it brings it out and slides it into place and it takes the picture that was there and it moves it to the left, angles it and sticks it behind the current one. And we can skip around, we can go to the end, go to the beginning. And we can also use the track bar down here and just change the track bar to get to the next picture and notice the animation happening and it flips them as well. So this code has been, it was there uh, since XE2. And here once I, uh, I open the dialog and if I, don't hit cancel if hit OK, then it makes sure there's, that the cover flow is empty. And then it goes through for all the files in the directory that I chose using the T directory class. It will set the parent for each cover to cover flow. That's its parent. And then it will fill and load the different pictures and position them properly. And that's how it's loaded to start. And then as we start, there's this method called set cover index where we can set to a specific image in the cover flow. And in there, when we choose that, it's going to move by doing an animation. It's going to move the current picture uh, underneath, and then it's going to bring the picture that we want based on that index that's passed in, which is an integer index into the number of pictures that we, that we loaded from the dialog. And then it does this animation float to move and animate by the x-axis, the y-axis, and the rotation angle to turn it at an angle. And that code's been there since, again, XE2. So in order to add actions and gestures to this, to this example, I put down an action list. So this is a T action list component. There it is listed over here, the action list. And I added a gesture component using the T gesture manager. And I associated the gestures with the viewport. So in this area, which is the, for a 2D application, I can do 3D. So viewport 3D says within a 2D application, load things that will do 3D operations. And this viewport is a 3D view on top of a 2D application. So for that, I put the gesture manager and associated it with the viewport 3D. And then if I look at the standard gestures, I've checked to say I want to process through the left and right gestures and also the uh, chevron left and chevron right. And, I'll, and I want them to fire the different actions that I generated. So right mouse click on T action list. I can bring up the action list editor. I can see current actions that I have. I can add actions and I can delete actions. And I can also navigate to an action. So in my case, I created four actions first action, last action, left action, and right action, and associate those with the four standard gestures I wanted. And then all I needed to do was work with the track bar. Since all this other code is associated with uh, 
doing the operations themselves on the cover flow and the images, it has it has one um, event handler in particular called trackbar change, which says whenever the trackbar value changes to something, then call set cover index taking the trackbar value. So I could reuse something I already have, which is this event handler for trackbar change, with my actions and gestures, just by saying, when I do first action, which is gonna be that Chevron left, set the trackbar value to zero, just setting that is going to fire this event handler up here on trackbar change, it's call set cover index to do the right thing. Last action, which is the Chevron right, I'm gonna set the trackbar value equal to cover flows children count minus one. So we go from zero to uh, the number of images that are in the cover flow by getting the cover flows children count. It's got whatever number it was, I forget, six or seven images in this case. And then the left action, all I need to do is make sure that I'm not at the first image. If track bar value is greater than zero, then decrement the track bar value, which will drive again that event handler up here. This, on track bar change to set cover index to whatever that new value is. And the same thing for the right action, which is gonna be my right gesture. I wanna see if I'm at the end. And so if the track bar value is less than the cover flow children count minus one, then I could increment the track bar value and have it uh, through the event handler up here again, uh, call set cover index to the right value. Now, if I switch back, I'll just add a couple more gestures that I want to support just to show that you can how it, how I put the gestures there in the first place. So we'll go to the 3D, the viewport 3D, go down to the gestures. And what I'm going to do is uh, say I also want to support up and down gestures. And you have two choices in, in the object inspector for s associating actions with gestures. You could also decide to just do on gesture, have an, a general event handler all the gestures and then dispatch based on gesture ID what you want your code to do regardless of the gesture. So there's on gesture event handler. In this case I want to associate actions with gestures so I can right mouse click in the object inspector or click in it and say create a new action, choose from some standard actions that are already built in and, or choose a different already existing action. So in this case when I do up I want to go to the uh, to the next uh, action, which is the same as doing a right action. And for down, I want to associate uh, the, the, uh, the same as left. So I want to associate left action. So these actions are nice reusable sets of code in addition. So let's now run this application and let's load the pictures. All right, and again, I can click on the mouse and go around I can make a gesture, there's a left gesture. Now to do a left gesture on Windows, I don't have a touch screen in the case of my MacBook Pro, so I'm using either of the mouse buttons held down and moving the mouse uh, either to the right or the left. So you can use the left mouse button. So I'm doing that gesture. If I do a Chevron, then it goes to the first. If I do Chevron right, if I can do a Chevron properly, it goes to the last. If I do up, down, well up takes me to the next. So if I'm at the end, it doesn't do anything. And if I, it doesn't change the track bar value, so I'm doing a down gesture, and it's moving to the previous one, an up gesture, right? Now this also works on Macintosh, so we can go and change the target platform to uh, Macintosh OS 10. And then I can build this, uh, this application. And now if I say compile and run, and we can select and pick some pictures. Open the pictures, there they are. So I can use the mouse still, I can click, I can move the track bar, just like before. On Macintosh, there's a track bar, but the track or trackpad on my MacBook Pro, single finger on the trackpad just moves the cursor around. Two fingers to the left, to the right. Now you can't see this, but I'm moving. There's moving the mouse with one finger. Two fingers makes a, a gesture. So there's right, left, up, uh, down, uh, chevron, and so on. So uh, you can set if you want the trackpad or if you have an external trackpad or one of those mice that acts as a trackpad, I just have uh, a regular uh, Windows mouse, sorry, and I have my trackpad that's built into the MacBook Pro. You can set that in system preferences, what the touch, whether you have touch enablement, it's on by default, and what you want some of the, the standard gestures to be. 
So again, it works on it works on Windows and it works on Macintosh. 